I gave myself one week to recreate Terraria entirely in Unity. My Discord said they couldn't tell the difference. My goal for day one was to get the basic terrain generation working so I could generate some caves, some terrain on the surface, and also have all the tiles working. This didn't go as planned. I ended up spending day one mainly setting up the namespaces and the project architecture. And I also spent countless hours setting up the rule tiles. It's a bit ridiculous how many sprites Terraria actually has. <laughs> Unity makes it easy to extract sprites from a sprite sheet, which was really handy. But then actually importing them into a rule tile took some time and defining all the rules as well. Something I didn't know initially about rule tiles was their extra little functionality where you don't have to define a rule for each direction a tile can face. You can just define one and tell it to rotate based on its surrounding, which is quite handy. I didn't know Unity had that ability until I read through its actual documentation because I needed a custom tile so that I could get the stone and the dirt and grass to connect to each other rather than staying separately. And it also let me define special tiles. So for example, when dirt and stone connects, it can use a different sort of tile to avoid the choppy sort of transition between stone directly into dirt. The goal for day two was to finish off what I couldn't finish in day one, which was getting the basic terrain generation working. So I got that work. The caves were generating, the terrain was generating nicely as well. And I also added the background rule tiles so I could get some walls to cover up the empty gaps in where you could see the sky. I've done this sort of thing uh, many times before. So really it was just kind of doing the same thing again, but a little bit better. I moved all the data and the settings for the terrain into scriptable objects. That way I can easily drag and drop whichever terrain settings I want into the terrain generator and it would use that. Although I am only using one method of generation for this project, it still lets me make the whole thing expandable and also keeps my editor nice and clean. Day three was one of the days I was kind of dreading uh, because I knew I had to add ores and add-ons and trees and whatnot onto the terrain to make the game feel a little bit more lively. But I also knew that it would not be as easy as it sounds. The ores was relatively simple. Just using Perl noise to determine where the ores are placed and each ore sort of calculates that itself and I can just read that and place the relevant ore in that tile. The trees was where I struck a little bit of a hurdle because although yes, generating a tree is relatively easy, Terraria actually has branches and roots for the trees. To make my life easy, I ended up just using rule tiles. So I can just place a leaf next to the trunk and if it connects with the trunk, then it can just switch to the leaf branch sprite, for example. Um, this worked well in the editor when I was just testing on its own, but when it came to generation, it ended up connecting to the wrong tree. To fix this, I used a bit of a crude fix where I just said, okay, if there's a tree next to it, don't spawn a tree there. That way you can't have two trees next to each other. And although that's a bit of a band-aid fix, it did the trick and I was ready to move on anyway. Day four was gonna be the day which actually brought everything together. So I was doing the lighting and the lighting was relatively easy to do. I use Minecraft system of lighting, so every block has a light value between 0 and 15, 15 being obviously the brightest and 0 being the darkest. I would then start the calculation at the top of the world and move block by block down and every block that was a sky block would set to the max brightness and every time we hit a solid block would negate the brightness by 1. Every time we hit a background wall block then would negate the light value by 0.5. For any tile it encountered in that calculation that was meant to illuminate which was a light block, for example, a torch, it would then set the light value to the max brightness again. And this works pretty well. The issue was that if I'm rendering it in only one direction, then any blocks above that light source would still be the color it was meant to be because it doesn't take that into its calculation. So then I did the same calculation in reverse. And this got me the basic light map where it was just black and white textures because it's either going to be max brightness or not going to be max brightness or something in the middle. But this didn't take into account adjacent tiles. So all I had to do was check the neighboring tiles and set the brightness of each tile to the brightness of its brightest neighbor subtracted by one or whatever I was meant to subtract it by. I then optimized this by chucking the whole calculation into a coroutine, which lets it run on a separate thread having minimal to zero impact on the overall performance of the game, which is exactly what we want since it's doing the calculation for every tile in the world, world plus it's adjacent tiles times two because we're going in both directions. So realistically, if we have a 300 by 200 tile world, it's doing it 300 times 200 times four times two calculations. And to run that all on a single thread would be ridiculous, but I didn't want to jump into chucking it into a compute shader, which is actually a better way of doing the whole calculation anyway. 
After day four, I was starting to get a little bit tired, but I knew that I also needed to add liquids and a water simulation to the game. So day five was spent by adding water and lava into the game. There wasn't much of an issue with these. The whole system actually works pretty easily. Again, in a separate thread where each tile just checks if it should or should not propagate the water into its adjacent tiles and each tile that does spread does the same check and this system is basically recursive and since each tile does its own calculation on the separate thread it has pretty much no impact on the performance and I can simulate as much water as I want and while the water is simulating I can still do other things in the game such as update the lighting or break blocks and the reason I needed that to work is because when I was adding lava I needed lava to update the lighting each tile it propagated so that way it illuminates the area as it flows, which has a pretty good effect actually overall. By day 7 I had implemented most of the features I was planning to add, but there were still a few features which I just knew that I didn't have enough time to add in my assigned time frame. <laughs> so, I had to cut out some of those features and hopefully one day I'll come back to the project. Looking through the sprites I actually downloaded, Terraria has a lot of stuff for the player so I think it would be actually really cool to be able to add something like that as well as a basic inventory for them to be able to run around and collect some tiles. For those interested in downloading the project, it's currently not available anywhere but I will be uploading it to Patreon where tier 2 patrons can download it and mess around with the code as they wish. Thank you.